One last thing about projectile motion is that it's symmetric. For example, if it takes five seconds to get from the ground to the peak, how long will it take to get from the peak to the ground? Five seconds. We don't need to figure that out all over again. So keep in mind that projectile motion is symmetric. That oftentimes can save you time when you're working on those problems. There's another way in which it's symmetric. Let's say that at this point, your horizontal velocity is 3 meters per second, and your uh, vertical velocity is 5 meters per second. And let's say these, I'm trying to put these at the same height. Now let's say this is at the same height as this over here. What would be your horizontal velocity over here when we're moving down past the same height that we were over here? What would be the horizontal velocity? Three. Positive or negative? We were moving to the right over here, and we're still moving to the right over here. What would be the vertical velocity? Negative. Again, this shows how crucial it is in order to think clearly to always separate the components. The way you would think about the x component is quite different from how you think about the y component. That's one of the most important skills your instructor wants you to take from the whole class, thinking in terms of components. That really simplifies thinking about two-dimensional and three-dimensional motion. I chose these as the positive directions. So here's another way in which projectile motion is symmetric. Your speed when you move up past a certain position is the same as your speed when you move down past that same height. The speeds are the same, but the velocities in the vertical direction have different signs. Remember that the speed is just a magnitude. Um, of course, your horizontal velocity is the same everywhere. Um, but if you're comparing two points at the same height, one that you're going up past and one that you're going down past, they have the same vertical speed and opposite vertical directions. So opposite vertical velocities. That oftentimes can again save you time or help you out on projectile motion problems. Projectile motion is <coughs> symmetric. Uh, a couple other types of hidden information. Let's say that an object is being dropped. What does that tell you about our variables? If the object is dropped, There's no initial yeah, that tells us that the velocities, initial velocities are zero. If you're simply dropping something, then it started with no velocity. So if they told you the object is dropped, I would put a zero here and a zero here for V initial. And if it's being dropped, then it can never have a horizontal velocity, because this isn't changing. But it will eventually have a vertical velocity. That would be more like a one-dimensional problem. Let's say that an object, so uh, let's say an object is being thrown. Well, then it does have an initial velocity. So there's a big difference between being dropped and being thrown. If you're thrown, then when you leave the person's hand, or if you're being shot, say, then you have an initial velocity. What does it mean if the object is thrown horizontally? Which of the variables does that tell us? There is no initial y velocity. That's right. If you're being thrown horizontally, your path would look like this. Initially, you're just moving horizontally until gravity imposes some vertical velocity. So if you're being thrown horizontally, we would know that v initial y is 0. And Vx would be your initial horizontal. So initially, all your velocity is horizontal. This is a, so this is another common way that things are expressed on these problems, another type of hidden information, being thrown horizontally. If you're being thrown at an angle, then you'll have both an x component and a y component. And then you have to break that into components. That's also pretty common. OK, so let's try one problem. How uh, about uh, the example on page 39? So let's try to cover up the explanation and try the example on page 39 for that.
well, we can kind of go through this together. The first step is to draw the path. A well, path is going to look kind of like this. So here's the ground. Here's the gash. Remember that it's very important to label the initial and the final positions. Well, what are the initial and the final positions here? Well, the, the most convenient things to choose as our initial and final positions are these two points. Why should we choose these? Because this is where the object starts to be under the influence only of gravity. Remember that all of our approach here is designed to work when we're only under the influence of gravity. So we have to start when we're first only under the influence of gravity. And why should I stop over here? Well, for one thing, once we hit the ground, we'll be under the influence not just of gravity, but of the force from the ground. So this is the part where our normal projectile motion approach can apply, when we're only under the influence of gravity. I guess this is kind of a Dukes of Hazard uh, type problem. All right, so let's put some of our information in here. Um, this height over here is what? Uh, what should I do with the number 31 meters per second? That's its initial x velocity. Good. Uh, let's choose our positive directions. Uh, some people might choose down as the positive direction here, but I'm going to stick with up as the positive direction. You can do it either way. So um, should that be positive or negative 31 meters per second? Well, positive. And how about this number 1.7? Where should I plug that in in our framework? Delta y. Yeah. Except I shouldn't just say 1.7. Negative or negative. Yeah, this is the part that people are most likely to get wrong. People are most likely to forget that displacements have signs too. Remember that we're starting here and moving down here. So we're being displaced in the negative direction. So if you choose up as the positive direction, you've got to make this negative. This is one of the most common mistakes people would make here. So again, put a sign in front of every displacement, even if it's positive, and that will help you to remember when it's negative. Maybe some people might prefer here to choose down as the positive direction, and then this would come out to be positive. But uh, a lot of instructors like to always pick up as positive. So, All right, so this is an important part to highlight in your notes. Any other numbers that we know? Yeah, I should have erased this. We know that this is 9.8. It's negative 8. Yeah, and because we've choose our, chosen our positive direction, this would be negative 9.8. And we know VIY and VFY are zero. How do we know that V initial Y is zero? Because we're not being thrown. Now, in a sense, we are being thrown in the sense that they're stepping on the gas. So we're being thrown like horizontally. Yeah. What's the word in the problem that tells us that initially there's no vertical velocity? Straight over, straight over the edge. They said we're going straight over the edge, which means that initially we have no vertical velocity. Of course, if the road was flat, then we have to go flat off of it. Uh, but it would be perfectly possible, you know, if this is like a Dukes of Hazard type thing, that the road could have been kind of slanted like this, and then we would have an initial vertical velocity as well. Um, that would be a more interesting problem. That would be a good test problem, but we're doing a slightly easier problem where the road was initially horizontal. So this is zero. Uh, What's the question asking us for? The displacement of x. Yeah. Remember, we should always use a question mark to indicate the question. So we should put this in here as the question. All right, what now? We can solve, we can solve. For, time. for time. And then yeah. use it for the other. Now, what do we really care about here? We care about the horizontal components. But we don't have enough information yet to do the horizontal components because we only know one number. But if we can figure out the time, we could move that over here. Well, do we know enough over here? Yes, because we have three numbers. So which equation should we use here? Delta y equals 1 And let's keep putting in our subscripts. Good. This is the equation that's missing v final y. So we have negative 1.7. The initial y is 0. The acceleration is negative 9.8. 